welcome to GBS. Just thought I'd take this opportunity uh, to run through some of the options on the um, race and track day side on the chassis and that, as we've got quite a few going out in the next, well, next few days, in fact. Uh, just show you some of the differences, some of the chassis options, and talk you through them. So um, we'll start off with um, this one here. Um, as you'll notice, it's in red. Um, we can offer custom powder coat colours and that. Um, this customer's chosen to go like a nice uh, metallic red. Uh, looks really nice, actually, out in the sun. Um, Standard is black, um, but we can do other colours. We've got the white one. Um, but if you do want something a little bit different or unique, uh, just ask the question and we can try and accommodate it. Um, so this chassis here is a Gen 2, um, which they all are now. It's a GT chassis. The GT is our wider version of the chassis, so it gives you the extra 40 mil each side. Um, and this has got the MSA style cage on. Um, the customer with this one though is going to be doing um, road use, not um, any competition, so it's more of a track day road car. And there's a few subtle differences we've done um, that have tailored it for that. And then the one behind us is a dedicated race car, um, which again is slightly different. So um, I'll just talk you through some of the bits and um, explain why, why we've done what we've done. Um, so the cage on all of the zeros, when we set out to do the roll cage on the car, we wanted it to be as safe as it could be. Um, that's the whole point of having it. So the cages are all fully integral to the chassis. So if you look here, the tube in the chassis is replaced actually by the cage. So the cage comes right down and everything all ties in. So it's all triangulated into the chassis. So it's as strong as it can be, the same at the back. Um, I really don't like the idea of bolt-on cages where they either sit on the outside, inside, or connect on. Um, I've seen it a few times where they've um, either not been fitted correctly, not had crush tubes in, or when they have had an accident that it's distorted and moved and stuff. Uh, so we said, if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it properly. Um, so this one um, is the MSA. It's got sidebars on each side, which we can, we can do as an option. So we've got the approval with or without, depending on what you're racing. Um, if it's more sprinting and stuff, you probably would leave it. If it's wheel to wheel, I personally would put one on at least the driver's side. Um, this one we've got the standard floor so it's standard steel floor as on all the zeros that's welded in and we've gone with the lowered floor because he's going to be on the road mainly so he's going to keep the seat runners and so on um, it's got the standard mazda um, pedal box setup in um, and this one's based around a mazda running gear and stuff although all gen 2 now are universal in the engine base so you can run your mazda engines your ford engines your Jurotex, and so on the chassis are all common so it gives you lots of flexibility for um, changing the engine and tuning in the future. Um, so the main difference what we've done on this cage um, is on the rear stays. Um, so if this was going to be for competition and comply fully to the MSA um, regs, the rear stays would actually come down and connect onto the back of the chassis. Um, as this customer is going to be on the road though, he wants to run the standard fuel tank and have a boot space. So it's a track day cage, so it wouldn't necessarily comply to the regs for certain classes of racing, but for what he wants, it's perfect, still allowing him to have a boot. Um, and then, like I say, side impact bars. We can also put the additions of like rain lights on the back. Um, we've not got it on this. If you were to go with that, uh, the option's there. Um, so that's a track-focused GT Mazda chassis. Then this one here is our FIA approved chassis so uh, a couple of years back now we decided to do um, the full FIA homologation which is the world um, world spec whereas your MSA motorsport UK spec is um, is based around the UK regs so if you were competing in France or abroad you'd have to then meet the relevant requirements although they're all aligned similar going with the FIA it just covers you everywhere main difference on the FIA they um, required you to have a few more tubes within the chassis they um, gave you more freedom on the design in some areas of the chassis and the materials and wall thickness used. So it's actually a bit lighter. We go, we've gone for a higher grade of tube um, with a thinner wall. Um, they work on a, um, a deflection. So as long as you don't deflect by a certain amount and it meets the requirement, you're a bit freer on the design. You're not following a design template. So FIA has got the extra brace. So again, fully integral, but it's also now got the full brace coming in. So you've got even more side impact protection plus the sidebar. And we kept these in a little bit tighter just for aero. It's on there. It's got the um, diagonal on the top. We had to put the full cross in the back 
and then it's got the double rear stays. So if you look at the back here, what I was saying before, your fuel tank would normally sit there, whereas the full MSA and FA come right down to the bottom. The design intent behind that was that your fuel tank sits above the diff. So if you were to have someone run into the back of you or spin and go into a tire wall or something um, backwards, you're less likely to damage the fuel tank. So it's a safer, safer option. Um, so it's that added protection. All the cages are welded on fully on there. This one, we've gone with a standard floor. So he's gonna purely race this. So we wanna be as low as we can and go for the full flat bottom for the arrows. So we've kept with the steel floor on the center section where your seats bolt. And then we've got aluminum footwell panels and they've got some nice uh, swage lines in them just to give a bit of rigidity and also gives you somewhere for your feet to press against, stop you sliding around. And we generally put some of the um, anti-slip tape on there as well. We've also on the full race one is it's got the full um, five or six point harness, um, which is a requirement for racing. What we've done though, is we've mounted it actually at the front of the chassis and then it comes up through the hoop on here. So you're mounting there up through and then through the seat. What this does, it allows you to adjust it a lot easier. So you're not faffing about going underneath the seat trying to adjust the harnesses. You can do it while sat in the seat because they're in front of you. So it just makes it a little bit nicer and easier um, to adjust. We've also on this one, on the pedal box, we're running a um, slightly different pedal box in that we're running twin cylinders. So it'll be hydraulic clutch, hydraulic brakes, but there's a front cylinder, a rear cylinder. So it's a bias setup with a balance bar. So you can vary the brake pressure front to rear and get the balance, um, which is really useful because the zero is a 50-50 weight distribution with the engine being further back. It means you can run quite a bit more bias to the rear, uh, especially in the dry. You can um, really get them standing on the nose on the brakes. Uh, so we've got that set up and then it's got the standard short throw pedal and all the other bits that we uh, have as standard on the Gen 2. Um, like oil cooler mounts on there, the rad mounts, etc. We've also took off the mount for the headlamp because he's not going to run headlamp. So it just, again, cuts your frontal area down for your uh, aerodynamics. Um, this customer is going to be running the Mazda diff with a 1.8 Mazda. And I think he's going for the ATR front hubs and dampers. Um, we've also got, just as a point, on all the chassis, if they are FIA or MSA approved, it will have the um, ID tag on there um, and that's the same on the MSA ones and that so you can actually identify it and that's all on the paperwork and everything that's filed with the um, Motorsport Association and so on. Um, so that's looking in, in their raw chassis form and then we'll move on and have a bit of a look at a, um, an assembled car. One thing I did forget to mention, um, as we manufacture everything in-house and do all our own cages and fabrication, if you do want something slightly different, um, we can, can accommodate that. So we have for a few people in the past where they want to do um, sprinting, so they want the, the race um, rear roll bar with all the rear stays on and everything, but don't want the front section of the cage. So for certain sprint classes, you can do that. And we can also then put the diagonal that goes from the center down into the footwell. Um, so there's, there's various options. Um, anything you want different, just uh, contact one of the team and we'll try and help. Um, but now we'll have a look at a uh, finished car. So with all the GBS cars, um, we have the option that you can have them as a kit to assemble yourself, um, as this one is here. So the customer's going to take it like this and do a full assembly. Or we can do it part build, a bit like we do with the component build kit. We can do that for a race market, or we can go to a full factory built race car. Um, so depending on you know, what you want, whether you just want to have an arrive and drive, or whether you actually want to build the car, we can accommodate that. Um, if you are looking uh, for a car to a particular race championship, um, we can then tailor the design and all the configuration of the car. So we've got one that um, we're going to be building soon for a customer and he's going full sequential paddle shift, um, which is all running through the life ECU. And we've really gone through the spec um, of the car and really tried to optimise that against the rules for the championship he wants to run. Um, so we can kind of tailor the specification and the build to give you the maximum performance um, within the rules of the championship you want to run in. Um, or whether it's hill climbs or just purely for a track day fun car. Uh, we're going to have a look at a um, nearly complete race car. So this one's going to be um, the GBS um, race car demonstrator track car that people can borrow, try, test and just get out there really. So it's a full FIA chassis with all the features we've just discussed and I'll have a run through some of the other details. Um, white powder coat, uh, looks really nice but it's a nightmare to keep clean and handprints and stuff so bear that in mind when you're picking some 
um, colours and stuff, um, what they're going to look like throughout the building, throughout the life of the car. Um, so this car's running a 2.5 Geotech with the Mazda NC 5-speed gearbox. So it's our standard 2.5 setup, which we covered in other videos, but it's got our ATR throttle bodies on it, 42mm 421 exhaust, our own um, wet sump. I've kept it on a wet sump, although we do have the dry sump options available. Might do another video actually covering dry sumps because we've got another car um, with a dry sump set up on. Um, we are running an oil cooler though, just to manage the temperatures. Um, all the cars now have got the 60 mil dual pass radiator that we developed for the California market with the Spell motor, Motorsport fan. And then the latest ones now have done nice um, aluminium bent swage pipes. Um, just look a lot nicer and a bit lighter and just a higher quality finish. Um, We've gone with the bigger cooling system as standard. What we have found, particularly on our cars, when we're doing a lot of demonstration runs and stuff at the circuit, you're, you're going out doing three or four really hard laps, coming in, swapping passengers and stuff. The heat soak and heat build up, um, having that extra alley rad and the better fan and that really helps to manage the temperatures. If you're just doing track days on your own, you can get away with a little bit more because you haven't got the stationary time. Um, so it's just worth bearing in mind. Then this car's running the ATR uh, front hubs. ATR dampers, so we've got our front hubs, which is the full billet aluminium front hub, 300 mil floating disc and the four pot caliper. Brakes give you loads of braking power, loads of feel, and there's quite a lot of options in pads. The wheel bearing is a uh, standard GM part available anywhere in the world, along with the pads as well. So spares and parts wise, um, if you're in America at a track day or if you're in France or wherever, um, availability of consumables like that, are no problem. Um, we've looked at the a hub in another video and stuff but we can cover that again um we're running the brake bias on the pedal box um so it's adjustable front to rear so you've got a separate circuit for the front circuit for the rear and then your um, hydraulic clutch um on there um gives you the flexibility to really fine tune the balance of the car we've then got um inside we've kept it relatively minimal on this the dash isn't in it I'll, we'll have a look at the dash in just a sec but um, same seats arrangement, so we've got our um, GRP seats which we've mounted in solid. Really important on the race car is getting your seat in solid and not having much, no flex anywhere. Um, all while GRP seats are actually a twin part, so there's an inner and outer shell and the two halves bond together so it gives you a lot more rigid and stiffer seat. It's not just a single shell and they're bolted straight down. Um, there's options for putting runners and that, but if it's a pure race car I would just go directly down and get the seat in position and pedals and everything around you because you're the one that needs to be comfy um, for racing. Um, we've got the five-speed gearbox with our uh, billet quick shift on there as standard. There's the uh, battery master cut off on there and things that need to go for the regs. On this one, we're running the TRS GBS harnesses and we've got the option for the hands device on there. And it's a six point and we've also got the uh, arm restraints, which is a or hand restraint, should I say, which is a requirement on certain classes of racing. Um, we're running a 3.9 ratio diff in this that's a plated LSD. Um, on the LSD diff, depending on what you're doing, we've, we can set the backlash. We've got a really nice um, setup for the road that's nice and nice and progressive and forgiving, especially on the overrun. Um, on this one, we've got a little bit um, stiffer on it with it just being a dedicated race car. Um, fuel system. Um, can't actually see it with it with it being in, but the fuel tank's actually within, behind the cage, and there's an access panel from behind the seat, so the tank actually goes in from the opposite side. Uh, it's a 40 litre tank. Um, you've got your filler cap on here, and it's got a drain bung down. So if you if you spill any fuel and that, there's a drain straight down, so you're not going to splash all your car. Um, we've done a slightly different arrangement on the fuel system on this that we're uh, prototyping, where we've actually done a swirl pot that incorporates all the regulator and everything. That's a bit of a prototype part that we're testing. We've kind of Tried it in a few other things that it works, just want to now put it through um, a bit more aggressive scenarios on the track and that and just prove that it all works and then we'll probably offer that as a, as a standard option really on all the cars, it simplifies it quite a lot. Um, on this car there's a few little aero bits we've done as well, so a couple of years ago uh, we managed to get um, a day in the wind tunnel at Myra. Um, really interested and useful, um, we can share some of the data if anyone's interested but um, Although everyone always says a seven's like a brick, it's not necessarily the case and there's some quite big gains to be got. We're doing some subtle changes 
um, which I'm sure a lot of you notice, like things like the rear diffuser, the flat bottom, the way we've done the splitter around the front of the nose and fairing in the suspension, getting the headlamps a little bit lower and stuff like that makes quite a difference. But on the race, we've also done on the front wings, we've um, done some cutouts on the back of the wing. Um, what we were finding, you were getting a, a low pressure bit of air there that was just turbulent. So putting that there lets the air out and the pressure is more of a drag um, reduction. Gives a little bit of downforce, but it was the drag reduction. Uh, only thing is, don't do it on the road in the wet and that you get a hell of a lot of water coming out there. It's surprising how bad it is. Um, and we've done a similar thing on the rear. We've also put a few cutouts in the back of the rear wing. There's quite a draggy area in, uh, building up in the wheel arches and the rear diffuser when that's on, we've also got a um, knacker duck style cutout in it. Um, it was more from a temperature point of view. When we were running the smoke going through the nose and where it was doing, it was stalling a bit the air down the center of the tunnel. And we wanted to get a little bit more airflow over the diff and that. So by putting that cutout in there, just helped to draw it out. Um, didn't make too much difference on drag or downforce. It was more just to pull a bit more cooling air through. Um, on this as well, we've also done a slightly different nose cone, which I don't know where it is. Um, well, I'll grab that in a sec and have a look, but it's got an extra cut out, so it pulls the air out the um, nose. And then, um, important thing on the race car, obviously wheels and tyres. Um, we're running a couple of options on the wheels, but this has got the Team Dynamics uh, Flow Forge wheels. So they're one of the lightest um, you're going to get, really. Um, you can just have a look at that. Um, Team Dynamics, British company. Um, we're doing that and then we're running Yokohama tyres. Um, GBS and Yokohama have had a relationship for, well, since the start of GBS, um, we've always ran Yokohama tyres, um, really good tyres. They really understand how a lightweight car works. They've done a lot of work with Lotus over the years and everything and they've tailored the tyre technology to suit the lighter cars and you really can tell the difference. Uh, so this one's running AO52s, which is a road legal tyre, but it's more um, performance track orientated and then we've got the sort of cut slicks and the slicks and the various options depending on what you want to go um, I'd say starting out on this is perfect and then as you get more confident in the car and that get a set of slicks it's awesome um, that's a basic overview of the race car we'll probably do another video once it's all back together and actually running um, and talk in depth of a few other parts but um, I hope that all made sense and say so any questions or any um, race series or things you're wanting to inquire about, just speak to one of the team and uh, thank you for watching.